Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to administer the oath of office to our chamber's two newest members, Assemblyman Robert Andrzak, representing the 1st Legislative District, and Assemblyman Parker Space, representing the 24th Legislative District. Madam Clerk, please read the Certificate of Selection for Assemblyman Andrzak. Certificate of Selection. I, Kimberly M. Guadano, Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of State and Chief Election Official of the State of New Jersey, do hereby certify that the Chairman of the Democratic State Committee has certified to this, de to this department the name of Bob Andrzak to fill the vacancy in the General Assembly, 1st Legislative District, to represent the State of New Jersey in the 215th Legislature of New Jersey. Assemblyman Select Andrzak, would you please come to the podium to receive the oath of office? Uh, Assemblyman, you can repeat after me. I, I, Robert Andrzak, solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. The Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear, and that I will bear true faith, true faith and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same. And to the governments and to the government established, established in the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of member. Of member. Of the General Assembly. Of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Assemblyman. Uh, I now call upon Majority Leader Lewis Greenwald. Madam Speaker, thank you. Assemblyman, Rob, we welcome you to this House. And we want to all start by thanking you for your service to this country and the sacrifice that you have made for all of us to enjoy the liberties and the democracy that we celebrate today. But today's uh, official Recognizing you through this swearing in as a new member of this House will allow you to com continue your passion for this country and the democracy we hold so dear. God bless you. Thank you for everything you've done for us, and welcome to our family. Thank you very much. Minority Leader Bramnick. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senator Andrzejewski, thank you very much for your service to our country. The House is a special place. Uh, we are, it is very important to us that all of us express our views, and we welcome you to this very special pace, place where we do the work of the people of New Jersey. Congratulations, mu much success, and we look forward to working with you, sir. Senator Van Drew. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, thank you for the honor of speaking here today. I surprised a few of my uh, old friends from the days that I was in the Assembly, and it is always an honor to be back. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes because uh, now Assemblyman Andrew Zak is going to be serving with all of you. And I think it's important to me, and I think it will be important to all of you to understand the depth of the man and to understand all that happened to him and what his story is about. Bob Andrzak is always an individual who had a strong desire to serve this nation and a strong desire to serve all of us. When he signed up to go into the military, to go into the Army, um, obviously you go through testing. And they wanted him in military intelligence, military police. Sergeant Andrzak said, no, I want to be in the infantry. I want to be on the line. I, wa I don't want to send somebody else in. This is something I want to do. He was deployed twice into Iraq. And the first time he was deployed in Iraq, as Bob would say, and he won't talk about it, and that's why I'm here speaking about it. The first time that he was deployed in Iraq, 
he was being, as he would say, blown up just about every day. He was under constant fire. God was good to him, and through most of it, he was all right. And one night, when they had to perform a raid in the evening of a building that was thought to be a munitions storehouse, and they were wearing their night vision goggles to get over there, they had a hurdle across the wall to get into the building, and then they had a hurdle back across the wall in order to get out. For those that are familiar with this, when you wear night vision goggles, your depth perception is altered, and the sergeant had a much greater drop than he ever realized, and he shattered his leg. But Sergeant Bob Andrzak continued to serve the United States of America, and he continued to serve each and every one of us. He could have gone back home. He stayed in excruciating pain. He served his entire deployment. Eventually, they did make it stateside, and they began to mend his leg. But then there was a second deployment, and his entire team, his unit was deployed again. Sergeant Andrew Zack was held back. The doctors said he shouldn't go. His superiors said they wouldn't let him go. He argued, he pushed and pushed, until finally, against their better judgment, the sergeant went back for a second deployment and a second tour of duty in Iraq. And he was told that he would go on the provision that he would not get himself involved in the action, that he would stay to the side, the old proverbial desk job. Now, if you know a little bit about this man and what you've heard already, that wasn't good enough for him. He ended up on a convoy. And not only was he on the convoy, but for those that are in the military, they know there is one truck in the front of the convoy, and there is one truck on the back of the convoy that protect the entire convoy. Sergeant Robert Andrzak was in the truck at the rear that protected the entire convoy, but he was not only in that truck. He was the lone gunner that sat atop the truck in the turret, handling the machine gun, protecting everyone. And as a sergeant would tell you, that was a quieter deployment. There was less action, or so it seemed. Until one fateful day, the, the enemy threw a grenade. And it was a special kind of grenade. It was an armor-piercing grenade that blew up the truck, and it blew off the sergeant's left leg. It shattered the metal, and it put shrapnel through his entire body that he still has in him to this day, and he will to the day he dies. It burned his face. It burned his eyebrows off of his head. Now, most of us assembly people, most of us men and women, would have just gotten down to the ground and prayed to God that somebody would save us, that somebody would come along and help us. Sergeant Robert Andrew Zack still served this nation, and he still served all of us. He got out of the turret with blood pouring out of his leg. He crawled and crawled near death to check on his men in the back of the truck. Little did he realize that his men were in better shape than he was, and at the end of the day, they had to save him. He had to instruct them on how to tie the tourniquet on his leg. They had to get him on a chopper so that he would live. But he was bleeding so badly and so close to death, they couldn't get straight to the hospital. He bled out multiple times. He died and came back. Sergeant Robert Andrzak, two weeks later, after all of this, at Walter Reed, some of you may remember this because it was on national television, Oprah Winfrey came to visit him. I'm getting some help. Oprah Winfrey came to visit him, and it's an amazing story, and everyone can see it on, on her website. She still keeps it up there, um, just the kind of individual that he was. He received the Bronze Star with Valor, he received the Purple Heart, among many, many other awards that he received. Um, he comes to us today. He comes to us today with his prosthetic leg. He comes to us today with the shrapnel in his body. He comes to us today, yes, with his bronze star and his Purple Heart. But more than anything else, he comes to us today with a fierce desire to serve this country and to serve all of us and to serve this state. So I say to all of you on both sides of the aisle, please take care of this man. He is a good man and we're proud of him. Thank you.
Assemblyman Albana. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I don't think I could say it any better than the Senator did. Um, you know, you, you hear about a lot of heroes that go overseas and dedicate and give their life to keep America the greatest country in the world. And not only has Bob done that twice, um, lost his leg uh, during that fight, and he could have came back and got a job and said, you know, I did my job. I represented my country well. I gave it all. But he didn't. He knew his job wasn't done, that he needed to continue to give back to the people in the state of New Jersey. And he is going to do that here in this house. He is going to be a great assemblyman because I know where his heart is. I know where his mind is. I know where his dedication is. And Bob, I couldn't be any more honored and proud to be representing District 1 than with you. Um, you are in great hands in this great house because there is a great, great group of people here on both sides of the aisle. We're all here for the same reason, to make this a better state to live in, especially for the younger generation, and he is right here. And I know you are going to do that. So reach out to all the members on both sides of the aisle. They're all here doing the same job, and I know they welcome you with open arms. God bless you and good luck to you. Assemblyman Andrews. I'm honored and proud to be an assemblyman for the first district of New Jersey. This moment is one that I will cherish forever. As I have said before, I promise I will fight as hard for my district and for the state of New Jersey as I have for this country. I may have lost my leg in battle, but some lost their lives, making the ultimate sacrifice so we can vote and continue to live in the greatest country in the world. I will do my best to make them as proud as, <coughs> proud as I continue to fight here in the legislature. Again, thank you for this great honor, and I look forward to working with all of you in the future. <laughs>